Hey everybody, welcome back to another unboxing and review of my Star Trek Starship Collection from Eagle Moss. Uh, the next ship for this week's episode is... The USS Defiant, Defiant class. This is probably one of my most favorite starships in Star Trek history. Um, my, one of my most favorites. I don't want to get any hate in the comments. I have a lot of others, but this is definitely one of them. Uh, definitely in my top five, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up and just take this out of the box. I'm really excited to uh, take a look at this. haven't seen this since I first received it last year. Right. Alrighty, here's the stand. It's made out of metal, like always. Um, a little concerned already. <laughs> Anybody who's seen my past videos knows that uh, I think... There's a 90% uh, wobble rate for whenever the uh, the plug for the stand is located at the back. Uh, so a little concerned, but we'll see what happens. Uh, the back, as always, has its felt backing with the ship's name and registry, USS Defiant, NX74205. I, for the life of me, uh, cannot uh, remember what the uh, registry was for the Sao Paulo, which was turned into the Defiant after it, uh, the Defiant unfortunately met its end uh, in uh, the Battle of Chintaka, uh, which really sucked. But they got a new one, so that was really cool too. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get this set up, see what how wobbly it is. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, this thing doesn't even stick. This thing is wobbly as hell. I'm, I'm like pushing it hard in too. Yeah. I think I might have to glue this one down or s shove something in there to make it nice and tight when I officially uh, start displaying this in my house. Uh, yeah, that, that's a shame. Wow, that really comes off. Holy crap! <laughs> Okay, not touching that anymore. Let's move on to the ship. Okay, here we go, the USS Defiant. Oh, this is so beautiful. Okay, so I'm sure my returning viewers are noticing what I'm noticing, and that really bothers me, especially for my favorite ship. Um, there is no Aztecing on this hull. Uh, this is one of the most advanced ships in Starfleet, and it, it for sure should have the Aztecing. Um, sadly, there is no Aztecing on this hull, as you can see. But the issue of no Aztecing is kind of lessened in this ship. Not just because uh, I love the ship so much, but there is so much hull detail on this ship that, you know, I can live without the Aztecing. The Aztecing would have just made it look so much better. But I, I, I think I can live with it because the, the hull detail is amazing. Like, look, they got all that in the grooves here. Uh, man, that looks awesome. The top of the ship looks beautiful. Got the bridge there. And no, the bridge is not located here. A lot of people seem to think that the bridge is located at the end here. It, it is not located there. Uh, the bridge is right here. <laughs> uh, always has been, always will be. This part over here is actually pretty interesting. If you look at some of the master displays and the L cars for this ship from the show, uh, and from you know hearing or reading about what the designers had to say about it, um, this is actually a torpedo payload. Uh, this thing is filled. Uh, I don't know if it's quantum torpedoes or photon torpedoes, but. Uh, if absolutely necessary, this piece here could be launched and, you know, you can attack the enemy with this, with this huge torpedo payload. It was supposed to be super destructive. Uh, never seen used on show, so technically not canon, uh, but was incorporated uh, with a recent release in Star Trek Online for the Valiant class starship, which is a modified Defiant. Um, they incorporated the torpedo payload into that ship um, and obviously would have a walkway somewhere in here because on the show you would see the ship constantly docked from this end 
and I'll also the deflector is right there. Um, <laughs> they have a lot to say about this ship. Uh, anyways, uh, back to the review. Uh, again, the top looks really amazing. Let's get a, a back view here. Okay, there's the uh, warp nacelles. Um, the back is kind of blah, which is a, a shame. It looks like they, they, they went with the Voyager approach and just gave it really basic details. If you remember what that looked like, the, the top of the Voyager uh, ship looked horribly bland compared to the bottom. And uh, this is a, 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 an issue with me. This just tells me they got lazy. Um, this isn't supposed to be all blue. Uh, like there's these little middle bits right here. Like th this is supposed to be gray. This is supposed to be all hull around, and then the little sections here should be blue. You know, uh, it's a little annoying, um, especially when it's my favorite ship, one of my favorite ships. Uh, so that that's yeah, I'm a little pissed off about that. Uh, let's turn it to the front. Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> That's a little annoying too. As you can see, the uh, registry is located at the front of the ship. It's uh, left aligned, not centered. Um, yeah, that's a little annoying. Uh, they could have at least freaking centered that. I mean, you guys went ahead and gave the detail in the phaser strips here. In the phaser strip here, but you couldn't center that. <laughs> that's a little annoying. Flip it over so we can get a better view here. Let's light to get in the way. So there's the detail on the uh, in the deflector dish up here. Let's get a close-up look of the bizarre collector. So yeah, you see how there's gray all around that? That's correct. That looks fine. Still, they uh, went the lazy approach here. There, there should be uh, gray colored grills over this I think two of them um, so that that's a that's annoying come on all right let's look at the bottom now and the bottom looks beautiful <laughs> you get all the details the decals the shuttle bay hey look that's centered <laughs> The detail underneath here just looks amazing. The detail on the bottom is just as impressive as the detail on the top. For sure. Alright, let's look at the top here one more time. Side view. The back. front and the bottom all right now let's see how this thing displays on its super wobbly uh, stand I'm not even sure where this is supposed to connect that can't be it I mean there's nowhere else it could go well wow, that's where it goes Okay. Um. Whoa. Come on. There's no way that's how it goes. Does this go the other way? Try this again. Okay. Finally got it in place. I'm really afraid to move this thing. As you can see, I completely struggled to get this on the stand. Uh, it's very, very unstable here. And if you hardly touch the damn thing, it pops out of the stand. Um, of course, now it's not doing it. Maybe I finally got it in place properly, but yeah, this is 
like oh my god <laughs> it will not stay this is crazy oh my god I did not think this episode was gonna go this route all right um, I'm gonna gently back away and let's check out that magazine this is defiant Here, they cover the stand assembly. <laughs> exactly what I did, so at least I know I didn't do it wrong. Just a uh, horrible design. And it's, uh, it looks like a CG model. And here, this is what I was talking about. Those are the metal grills that go across the bizarre collectors and surround it. So yeah, yeah they definitely didn't include that, which was annoying. Hard to tell with this image because of the blue glow, glow, but all this and around is supposed to be gray, where this stuff here with this grilling is, is blue. Nice shot of it. Nice shot of it with the shuttlecraft leaving. Here's the engine room. A quick shot of the bridge and sick bay. There is it at uh, one of the many wars, battles fought in Deep Space Nine. Here it is in first contact, commanded by Worf, fighting the Borg. And you can see, uh, get a better idea as where the blue actually is in this scene. And sadly, this is a shot of it during the Battle of Chintaka, where it's about to go boom. Like they have a whole section here on the Defiance destruction. Oh, here we go. USS Sao Paulo NCC 75633. There you go. The Pulse Phaser Cannons, which was a nice addition. And then we got a nice orthographic image here the front and the back, the bottom, the top, and the side. really good. For some conceptual art for the uh, Defiant, I've never seen this one before. Uh, that's an interesting look. And there's this one here, which uh, I must admit actually looks pretty cool. I'd like to see that eventually show up, maybe in Star Trek Online. I'm glad they didn't go that route. <laughs> this one is uh, not that good. Uh, no offense to whoever the original uh, artist was okay so this one here this one I knew about this was actually recently added to Star Trek online as, as a ship um, so uh, yeah um, that one's actually pretty cool I like that one I've seen this one before too and uh, uh, this one does look really cool uh, but not as a Federation starship that looks more like a, an enemy ship um, so I'm glad they didn't go that route and there's the design they ended up with, which I'm very happy they did. So, there we go. <laughs> there's a shot of the studio model. And, uh, oh, there it is, exploding again. Always sad to see. And, uh, the, as you can see, the next uh, episode is going to be on the uh, Borgs here. So, look forward to that. So, that was interesting. Uh, fun little magazine there. Um, I'm really afraid to touch this thing right now. I'm just gonna take this off the stand. I'm, I don't feel comfortable at all with this ship being on there. Um, so uh, my favorite ship is gonna get. Uh, I don't think it's gonna get a great rating, unfortunately. Uh, Eagle Moss definitely dropped the ball uh, with a few things. Uh, let's start with the stand. The stand is ridiculous. The stand is dangerous. I don't know if it's just mine or if it's indicative of every Defiant model that's come out for this uh, series. Uh, but if you got one of these, buyer beware. <laughs> Your Defiant uh, will fall, most likely, and break. Uh, so be very, very careful. Maybe it's not even worth displaying. Or maybe you got to do something to it to keep it in place. I, for one, am not keeping this on the stand. I am afraid. So, displayability is a zero. Uh, sadly, zero out of ten. It's just completely unsafe to have this thing on display. Now let's move on to the ship. 
Uh, this is, again, one of my most favorite starships in Star Trek history. Um, overall, it looks great. If you're not a nerd like me, the little things that I notice won't, won't bother uh, most people. <laughs> um, the laziness around the bizarre collectors in the back of the uh, warp nacelles bothers me. So it's going to lose some some points there. Uh, the no as teching uh, on most ships would bother me, but again, the detail on the hull of this ship really, really uh, compensates for the lack of as teching. So I'm okay with that. I'll let that slide. Uh, the laziness at the front here with the registry number, you know, not being centered like this is annoying and could have been avoided if they just were careful. There's no excusing that. Uh, so it loses some points there. Um, everything else looks really good. So um, I guess this is a, a, a fantastic looking ship. They did a really good job on this for 90% of it. It's a shame they didn't go f a full 100% on the quality. Um, with all the issues in it, it taken into account, uh, this ship's overall appearance score uh, out of 10 will be a 7. Um, it should, some of you may, th may think that it should be a little less, maybe you think it should be more. Um, my love for this ship is too great, so it does, it, I'm a little biased, so it's going to get a bit of a higher score. Um, but I think 7 is still fairly fair. Um, you know, they, uh, they they did make a really good ship. It looks amazing. There are just some things that they really cheaped out on uh, and signs of laziness, blatant laziness uh, brings down this ship to a 7. Alright everybody, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, please uh, click on the subscribe button if you want to see more of my content. Also make sure you click on the bell located next to the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you'll know whenever my videos get uploaded and you don't miss any of them. If you like my content and want to see more content like it or what else I do, uh, please check the uh, videos and the links on the screen right now. Uh, I do a lot of unboxings for Loot Crate Sci-Fi slash Fan Block, um, the Firefly Cargo Crate, and I do uh, Let's Plays for Star Trek Online and Counter-Strike. Uh, thanks again for watching. See you all next time.